No Dak Prescott, no J. Ron Curse, and only one combined start on the left side of the offensive line. No problem for the Dallas Cowboys as they get their first win of the 2022 season, 20 to 17 at AT&T Stadium over the Cincinnati Bengals. Welcome in to Cowboys flashback, everybody. As we take a look back over the win that was for the Dallas Cowboys, it was won against the reigning AFC champions as Joe Burrow and company came to town and were held to just one offensive touchdown. It's the second straight week that the Cowboys defense has held a former Super Bowl appearing quarterback, Tom Brady in week one, Joe Burrow in week two to just one touchdown, but it was Cooper Rush that stole the show. He had only the one touchdown pass, but he did not turn the football over, and he led his second game-winning drive and his second start for the Cowboys in order to get the win on a 50-yard Brett Maher field goal as time expired to get the 20-17 to victory. Let's hear from Cooper Rush and his thoughts following his second start and his second win. Second NFL start, second time you've led the team to the winning points in the final drive. Just what that means to you and how it keeps this kind of team engaged of if we can just keep it close. We give it. Yeah, that was a that was a big one for us. You know, you can't you don't want to fall down 0-2. Um, need that first win. Um, defense obviously kept us in tonight, and then Brett at the end uh, doing his job and. 88 on that last drive and the protection and then Noah Brown catching the tip ball. Um, it's pretty incredible. Patrick Wolf at DallasCowboys.com. Speaking of Noah Brown, can you talk about the, the game that he had in the you know, matchup of this magnitude? Yeah, he's just a he's a baller. He's been we've been with been together since you know we were rookies. Um, you know, we're still around and he just keeps getting better and better every year and um, he earned that starting spot and you guys got to see it tonight. Why? All he does is make tough catches. All he is is in the right place at the right time. Um, the fourth down early on. Got in there perfectly. I cut that one loose and he was there. Um, you know, he's a heck of a player. Cooper, Tim Kalashaw, Dallas Morning News. The first fourth down on that first drive. One, did you take a couple steps toward the sideline before you found out you were going for it? And what does that do for the team to have that kind of confidence? Yeah, I was uh, glad we went for it after, you know, missing the throw on third down. Um, we were in our own territory, right? Forties, yeah. yeah. Um, so it was aggressive, and you know, Noah made it work. Protection was good, and um, that was big for us to get off on the right foot. Noah, you mentioned the protection. Clarence. Protection. Clarence. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Clarence Hill Four Star Telegram. Are you excited? You happy? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, winning, winning NFL games is a. Uh, a lot of fun. Let's talk about just the feeling in that locker room. Because you look subdued some, some now, but, but just the, the confidence that they have in you and what you're showing them that you can hold the fort. Yeah, you just want to you know do your job. Trust your teammates. Um, tonight we just we, we were smart. We ran the ball. Um, a couple long drives early on. Got our defensive breather. And then those, those guys just hung on at the end. The second half, you know, we went three and out a couple times. And those guys, uh, they deserve all the credit. Uh, Todd Archer with ESPN. When you go out there for that last drive, what are you thinking? Are you thinking just positive play on the first play and get it going? Or are you thinking big picture? What, what's in your mind? I was thinking great job by Terp getting us, you know, not backed up, got us got us out there a little bit. We only needed it. I mean, Brett's got a big leg. He can His range is pretty out there. So you need to just have to get a few first downs. Um, that first first down we always talk about in two minutes important. And uh, CD making a good play on the first one and then um, – Noah's tip catch, and uh, we were able to get in range. Super Jory Epstein, USA Today. I believe this was the first time in almost three years that y'all scored touchdowns on your first two offensive drives. How much does that mean, and how much did that help y'all the rest of the game with the way you wanted to split the run and pass in the game? Yeah, the fast start was key. Um, we got up. We could let our uh, D-line kind of get after them um, in passing situations. And uh, starting fast was key, something we talked about all week. Um, you know, we got finished probably a little better in the second half. Uh, but in the end, it worked out. Cooper Rush in the offense showing some resilience in that second half in order to get that final field goal to win it. But head coach Mike McCarthy knows a little bit of something about redemption. He wins his third straight week two matchup following a week one loss. We hear from the head coach when we come back on Cowboys Flashback. Dallas Cowboys Flashback presented by Reliant is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and by Reliant, an NRG company.
This segment is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Great team win, man. All right, all three phases, but let's give it up for Brett. Where you at, Brett? <laughs> Feeling, man, this is what it's all about. This is the locker room after a win. Enjoy it. Take care of each other. Great win. We got to be ready to get back to work next week, man. Let's go. Family on three. One, two, three. The Cowboys family happy with a win 20 to 17 over the Cincinnati Bengals. It's the third straight year that the Cowboys have dropped their season opener, but returned with a single score win over the three years underneath Mike McCarthy. They have not lost in week two, and it's been by a combined seven points after the game winning field goal there from Brett Maher. Let's hear from the head coach after his first win of 2022. Was this game one, how did you play? And two, is it kind of the template for how you're going to need to play to, to give yourself a chance to win during this period? Well, really, I, I think each and every year, I mean, you're in tune with, with your personnel and which ways, you know, you have to push push the, uh, you know, stress points and so forth. I mean, complimentary football has been our message really coming out of the offseason. So uh, that's why we, you know, spent more time in the padded work in the run game. You know, obviously, the defense, you know, defensive uh, run game, uh, you know, obviously we're, very, you know, good, excellent depth on defense. So play to your defense, special teams. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that was the game plan. Uh, you know, we wanted to commit to the run. I mean, we still have work to do on third down. I mean, that's, you know, we, I really like where we were at halftime with the blend of run and pass. And, uh, and I think we were, I think we we're 50, um, 50% at half, at the half and third down. So, uh, but, you know, obviously the second half was a, was a different story. You know, give them some credit. Uh, but our guys, you know, just kept banging away, banging away. And, you know, defense super productive with the six sacks and hanging in there. You know, this is a very, very talented offense. And, you know, talking about a football team that played in the Super Bowl last year. So I think that speaks for itself. Uh, so we knew it was, it it was going to be a big, big challenge. But, you know, it, it's, it's very rewarding when you watch your football team. Don't blink after you know uh, last Sunday, and, and then ha have a, have a really good week. You know you, your Wednesday's practice was was okay, and but Thursday we were where we needed to be. So uh, we're young in spots. You know at somewhere young guys did some excellent things, and but they you know they made a few mistakes, and and that's where you want to be. I mean you want to win football games and and have the opportunity to correct and grow, and and that's that's what will come out of this. This was an excellent win for us. Uh, I'm just so happy for our players, you know, especially, the, you know, the time and energy, because uh, we all have the same amount of time, but just the time and energy and focus they put in the end of game situations and, and to go down and win that at the end of the game. Brett, I mean, I'm so happy for Brett. You know, he gets, gets to come back home here and he makes the game winner. So we actually gave him the, the game ball here at, at, in the locker room. So excellent team win. Clint Dallas, Dallas, morning news, sorry. Uh, fourth and two on the first, very first series. Most people assume you got a punt, you got a backup quarterback. What was the decision there, and how did that go? How did that go? I mean, just really trusting the, the, you know, the ebb and flow and the momentum of the game. You know, fourth and three or less is, is you know, something you go in thinking. Yeah, you know, but uh, I, I, I thought, I thought, you know, we had our pads down. Uh, I thought, you know, just the first couple of runs leading up to that, that, you know, we were getting the apex that you look for. So I just, just had confidence in the situation, confidence in the call, and um, you know, and, and obviously it's an excellent execution. If I want to start a couple of questions from the fourth and two. Well, that's also you giving confidence to your team, letting them know that, hey, we're going for this. We're going to win this game. We're going to do everything. Leave it out. Well, I, man, I, 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 hope, I hope they see that in me every time I get in front of them, you know, or every time I interact with them. Yeah, we're, we're, we're here to win. I mean, and, and, and fourth and two is, you know, especially that early, you know, especially with our defense, you know, uh, punting is, is, is not – it's not a bad decision, uh, but you know, once again, uh, just just felt good about the way we started. I think it just really points to to where the team was coming in here, the preparation leading into it. So yeah, I mean, it's anytime you can show confidence uh, in your team, it, it's you know it, it's that's what you want to do as a coach. So I mean, I don't want to be you know taking crazy risks and so forth. You know, tried it. Uh, it's it's not worth it most of the time. So um, you know, I, I think it was just. You know, once again, I, we felt good about them. I, you know, I, I just like the way we're, we're, we we started. So I thought it was a it was a very easy decision. 
So Mike McCarthy very happy with the effort of his ball club following that loss in week one. But if they showed one thing in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals is that a lion is far more scarier than a Bengal tiger. When we come back, we hear from the lion Micah Parsons on Cowboys flashback. This segment was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Micah Parsons with two sacks in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals becomes just the fourth Cowboys defender to have multiple sacks in his first two games of the season. Joining Demarcus Lawrence, D. Ware, and Charles Haley. Pretty good list if you ask me. Let's hear from Micah Parsons after his phenomenal performance. You're on pace for 34 sacks through two games. With obviously a tremendous start to the season for you. What's working for you in the past? Right? Man, um, just executing my game plan, just knowing when to take my shots, when not to take my shots, understanding when to go high, when to go low, when to run the game. Uh, I, I just put a lot of work into the season. Out, outside this locker room, I think faith kind of evaporated when Dak went down. What was the belief in this room that you guys could go out there and get a win and, and keep this season afloat even though it's only two weeks in? Um, I actually went to chapel yesterday and uh, the man, the chapel man said, you have to go through tests to get to your testimony. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, like we're going through all these injuries and he was going on about it. So sometimes you got to go through some stuff to get to where you want to go. And right now we're still going through the storm. But, you know, as we're going through the storm, there's going to be light in the tunnel. And I think that's where we're heading. Like I'm sure the sacks feel really good, but on plays that you create the disruption, like the one where Leighton got the sack, how, how does that feel for you when you're able to create the chaos where your teammates are able to get the sack? Oh, it feels just as good because, you know, it's all it's all a team game here. You know, uh, one line can't do it by itself. You need a pride. Just like there's 10 hyenas on one line, the line's liable to lose, but the fact that I got 10 other guys out there and I feel I can rely on, you know, that's what makes this boat go around. And, um, you know, that's kudos to Layton because he knew exactly. I knew exactly how he was going to set it up. We drew it up just like that, knowing they were crashing on me. But you know, still trying to win them. You know, but I mean, that's just that's just mastering the game plan. That's just you know how to feed off each other. That's what teamwork is. The cheer we heard coming out of this locker room. Lawrence said the pressure that you guys put on you could feel the pressure. Did you feel that too? Did you feel like you guys were? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we knew that they were chipping, they were max protecting most of the game. And, um, you know, I don't think they can beat us with three receivers down the field, too much defense. And we were still able to get pressure. But, you know, that was the game plan. We were expecting those chips. We, we executed on all cylinders. Um, the only thing I wish is that we didn't give up a touchdown. Like, the cheer what's the message on the offense? That we got it. You know, I don't care what the offense put up. I told you, they could have zero. But we got to do our part. And, uh, you know, I think we're doing a damn good job at doing that. We hold two of the most elite offenses to one touchdown last two games and making them earn every little bit of it. That's how you be relentless, and that's what we've been preaching. And every guy in this room is bought in. The defense has certainly done their jobs for the first two weeks of the season, getting to Joe Burrow six times. In the throughout the entire ball game and only four times through that first half. They were fantastic. When we come back, we continue forward looking back with the wide receivers and how they fared in the 20 to 17 win over Cincinnati. This segment was brought to you by Ashley, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys secure the 20 to 17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals and Noah Brown secures his first career touchdown reception from Cooper Rush. Let's hear from the leading receiver after 91 yards in the score in week two. Just how, how satisfying is this for you? You making such a big impact in this game. Oh, it's extremely satisfying. You know, this, this organization put a lot of trust in me for a long time. And, you know, to, to come out here in a big stage, big moment and, and make the play. Um, I was happy I was able to do that for my guys. You and Cooper both played a lot together, not always having the opportunities, but winning, preparing, keeping yeah. 
satisfied is it to do with him, given that you guys passed so much juries in that respect? Man, it's huge. It's just a testament to all the work we put in in the facility. You, you know, not a lot of people get to see Cooper or, or me in the past, really, but, um, you know, the work showed today, so I, I'm proud of that. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep that one. Gotta keep that one. Not yet. I'll find one. Uh, nobody blinked an eye. I mean, we we all have supreme confidence in Cooper Rush. So you know, when he called the play, we was focused on executing. Oh yeah, it's great, it's great. But I was out there doing the dirty work today too. So, you know, I, I always take pride in that, take pride in getting open, take pride in blocking, whatever I gotta do. You, you and Cooper obviously came in the same year back in 17. Mm. You guys have spent a lot of time in practice building that camaraderie. What does it mean to have a game like this together? It means a lot. Like I said, it's just a testament to, to our hard work and practice and, and the fact that the things that we do in the, in the facility, they pay off on game day. So just having confidence in yourself, confidence in the next man next to you, and go out there and play. You remember how hard work paying off for Noah Brown. It also paid off for C.D. Lamb as he had 75 yards. Let's hear from him after the win. Along with almost 100 yards, if not 100, uh, can I, like I said, I'm happy he did it. We heard a pretty big cheer coming out of this locker room about five minutes after y'all came in here. What does this win mean to this group? It seemed like you guys were louder than I've heard in a while. Everything. It means everything to us as a group, as a unit, and as a whole. Um, just kind of taking this and using it as a, as a confidence booster and traveling it to the next week. Uh, just having a, you know, cohesiveness of each other and having each other's back and understanding that, you know, without without the guy next to you, I don't know if this is possible. So just believing in each other, trusting each other, and then having everyone do their job, um, that's ultimately what, what, what's the result. How uh, Sure. <laughs> We won. We lost last week. We won this week. That's why my attitude is different. How hyped are you guys, guys as an offensive group when you're watching Mike and them get after the back? It doesn't surprise us. It doesn't well, surprise, surprise us. But how hyped are you guys when you get seen? Always excited. Uh, love the defense. Love the rush. Love the guys in the back end. Um, very confident in our guys. And, uh, you know, they've held us up, you know, for a couple drives, you know, when we fell short. And then for them to just go out there and, you know, either get a three and out or cause the other guys a, a very explosive offense to, you know, settle for three. I mean, that's a confidence booster leading our way. C.D. Lamb trying to build on this performance as they head into the week three matchup with the New York Giants. But when we come back here on Cowboys Flashback, we introduce you to a couple new clutch additions to the Cowboys family. Dallas Cowboys flashback presented by Reliant was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Reliant, an NRG company. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Wrapping things up on Cowboys flashback after the Dallas Cowboys come out with a 20 to 17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals. It took a clutch kick from Brett Maher, one of the new additions to the Dallas Cowboys to get the win as he hits the 50 yard field goal as time expires. And we've got a clutch addition to the Dallas Cowboys media team as well. Haley Sutton makes her first appearance and she's going to host this show from here on out. So you don't have to see me anymore, <laughs> unfortunately, for all of you out there. But Haley, welcome to the team. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun around this Cowboys team, especially after they get back to 500. Yeah, I mean, I've been told all day that the energy today has been so much better <laughs> than last week. So I'm really excited. I'm coming in on week end of week two going into week three because everyone's been so nice to me. So I'm excited. I'm excited to reunite with you. This yeah. is so exciting for us. So I'm ready to get started. I'm ready to be here. Yeah, we used to work together at the University of North Texas and both Mean Green alum. So, of course, all of them up in Denton can always celebrate having more North Texas <laughs> in the media. There's a ton of them out there. But we're excited to have you as a part of the team. What were your thoughts on the win last night? Hey, look, I think the first thing that I said when we were starting this game was 
they just have to do enough, right? This, I've been calling it a Band-Aid situation all day, right? It's not a long-term solution. It's not an air cast. It's just a Band-Aid, and they did just that. Cooper Rush came out. He proved the haters wrong. He did what he needed to do, and the defense, which is arguably going to be the star for the rest of the season, they did what they needed to do. So it wasn't perfect. It wasn't pretty. But it got done. It got the job done. That was the thing, is especially in the second half, the resilience is the word that Mike McCarthy has been lofting up for everybody out there. They showed the resilience, and even though the offense didn't necessarily get off the ground that you wanted them to, much like they did in the first half, they kept the ship afloat, and they were able to close the job with the clutch field goal for Brett Maher. But you can follow Haley Sutton on Twitter, underscore Haley Sutton. Very easy to find. So she's going to be a part of the Dallas Cowboys team. We're happy to have her. We've been happy to have you on this ride on Cowboys Flight. Flashback, taking a look back at the Cowboys' 20-17 win over the Cincinnati Bengals. For our entire DallasCowboys.com crew, I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next week.